I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be Flaky Ex-Girlfriend. I've got three emails I'm going to go through with you today. Obviously, the first two guys are kind of struggling. And this third email is from a guy who was struggling, but in the process, he came across my work and was able to, even though he was already doing some, several things right on his own, that my book and my work was able to help fill in his knowledge gaps and it's a great contrast between the first two emails. What's interesting is the first guy's email, he actually does the right thing without knowing it and then he's surprised that the woman wasn't flaky on him. So this is a, a great email or a great video newsletter for guys that have trouble interacting with women that tend to jerk them around, flake on them, test them excessively, and generally just display behavior that's unreliable. And the interesting thing in this particular topic is that if you're a guy or a girl that grows up in a healthy, happy, loving family household where your parents get along well and they have a good, healthy marriage, you have a strong family, they communicate well, the kids grow up and recognize when people actually care, they're going to follow through with their actions. If you grow up in a family, say, similar to my family or how some of these guys obviously display and, and mention in their emails, you're probably used to people saying things and then doing the opposite. You, you grow up getting used to seeing that kind of flaky behavior. And so the gift or the piece of wisdom that you have to take away from your background is that you're emotionally going to be anchored to dysfunctional ways of showing up. And therefore, when you have these weaknesses, you'll attract other people into your life that will just naturally exploit these weaknesses because they're able to do things that emotionally make you feel like you did growing up in the family where you didn't get enough hugs, you didn't hear I love you's, your parents weren't treating each other right or the way they were supposed to, even if, you know, that's assuming that your pa both parents were actually involved in the picture. So the important thing is to recognize, like you'll notice, especially the first two emails, is these guys are really attracted to women that are kind of displaying the same kind of flaky, inconsistent behavior that they grew up with. And because of that, they're naturally going to make excuses for the other person's bad behavior, whereas kids that grow up in a healthy, happy family just recognize, hey, I don't like the way this person is treating me, or they're not reciprocating, and therefore, I'm just not going to hang out with them anymore. I'm not going to make enough of an effort with that person because they're not reciprocating it. It's not balanced out. They can naturally feel it and they just gravitate away from those kinds of people. But for those of us that didn't grow up in the perfect family, this is a good email to help recognize that behavior and how you need to be aware of it so you can make sure you're interacting with quality people versus making excuses for somebody that maybe behaves the way family members did when you were growing up. Because otherwise, to stay involved with these kind of people, you're just perpetuating the same kind of patterns that you grew up with. And the goal is to transcend these things so they no longer have any power over you. And you can be the last person in your family history that has this kind of messed up stuff going on in their family background. So with that said, I got a quote and then we're going to go through first guy's email. And the quote says, the unfortunate reality is that there are a lot of feral humans we all have to deal with in life. They drive slow in the left lane, cut you off in traffic, stand you up on dates without apology or remorse, take advantage of you when you least expect it, etc. If you come from a broken home or dysfunctional family, you will have plenty of emotional blind spots, flaws and faults that feral humans will try to exploit to take advantage of you. When we are conditioned by flaky, dishonest, devious and messed up people that this behavior is normal and to be expected, we will naturally gravitate towards people who display these behaviors and make excuses for how they mistreat us. The way to transcend these flaws and shortcomings 
is to have high standards for who you allow into your inner circle, set and enforce healthy boundaries, and quickly bounce the bad people permanently from your life so you can make space for good people to occupy. Whatever you allow or tolerate in your life, you will invite more of it. Choose wisely. I've learned this so many times over the course of my life the hard way. I enjoy going through these because somebody watching this video has got a similar background or similar circumstance and they're about to step on a landmine and I love being able to prevent people from having to make the same mistakes that I did. The goal is you want the next generation to get better. So let's go for the first guy's email. He says, hey, Corey, I've read your book three times, but I still need to go through it at least 20 more times. I come from a similar home as you did with a BPD mother. I assume that's borderline personality disorder mother who committed suicide and an emotionally unavailable father. I'm a successful and passionate 27-year-old male and have no problem with the initial phases of attracting women and making dates. It's usually keeping the ones I want like you talk about in the beginning of your book. I've been seeing someone for about four months now that would often cancel plans last minute but always reschedule. Well, the important thing is that she reschedules because if a woman cancels plans and doesn't offer any reschedule of those plans, that communicates that they really don't give a damn about seeing you. They, they just don't care. And you got to recognize that. Now, if you grow up in a family and you're used to being disappointed and being let down, that feels normal. So you think, oh, I'll just give them another chance. Maybe next time they'll show up, especially if you had a parent that was kind of absent and that would promise to be there for the weekend and then, oh, I guess I'm coming. I can't make it. We usually see each other once a week and in the first two months, everything was great. She felt that she wasn't a priority to me and hated that she was always the one reaching out first. Well, the fact that she was bringing it up and complaining about it shows that she cares. She was obviously a little worried that she was more into you than you were into her. So notice what he does next. Now, like typically when guys experience this because, you know, as I talk about in 3% Man, which you can read for free at understandingrelationships.com. All you got to do is subscribe to the email newsletter. Is that the woman should be doing most of the calling, texting, and pursuing. The guy should never do more than 20 to 30%. The closer he gets to 50 50, when I talk to a guy, I'm doing a phone session, he's like, Yeah, it was about 50 50. It's inevitable that he's going to get friend zone, especially when I ask that question in the beginning and he hasn't told me how the whole story ended. I always tell him what typically is going to happen. He's like, yeah, that pretty much happened. So it's predictable. If you're pursuing too much, it never gives the women time away from you to wonder about you, to think about you, to miss you, for those feelings to develop inside because women take time to fall in love. <clears throat> so at least at this moment, he's doing everything right. Now like what I talk about is if she continues to complain and be upset, then once a week you'll surprise her whether it's a text or a phone call or a WhatsApp message or an email or a card of some kind or a little post-it note stuck someplace where she'll find it that just says, hey, I'm thinking about you. Hey, have a great day. This weekend was amazing. Just wanted you to know I was thinking about you and I love you or whatever because the reason why she's complaining is she doesn't feel that you're saying it enough. Now, it doesn't mean that you go – and you start blowing up her phone. It's just to be aware of it. And sometimes they'll complain, and but it's just every couple of months if they're doing almost 100% of the calling, texting, and pursuing. It's only when they really press you on it and they bring it up a number of times that you're going to start. And in other words, it's like you kind of reluctantly, begrudgingly, a little bit, do a little bit more pursuing and see how that goes. But obviously, this guy went a little too far. And so notice what he says. He says, like a dipshit. I put in the effort because I truly did and do like her. She started her last semester of nursing school around this time, so she soon became much less available and said she wasn't sure if she could be the person I deserved. <laughs> She's complaining that he's not reaching out enough, so he starts reaching out. Obviously, he reached out too much and now 
it, you could tell she's starting to feel a little smothered. He's pursuing too much, and now she's like, oh, I don't know if I can be there for you. I'm going through a lot right now in my life. So that's what she's trying to say without being able to articulate it in a way that a guy typically understands. is just, hey, dude, you need to back off a little bit. You're pursuing me too much. And he says, I'm aware that this is bullshit. Yeah, that's the awareness that, oh, shit, I called and I pursued too much, and now she's taking me for granted. And I said, okay, give me a call if you change your mind. So in other words, he just, hey, Aaron, no problem. So he backs off, which is the right thing to do. He says, the sex was great, and we've never had a time where we got together and didn't hang out and have fun and have sex. She contacted me a week later, because remember, she needs time away to wonder about you and think about you and to miss you. And so she's pushed you away, and after not hearing from you for several days, because I don't know how much he was reaching out to her obviously but it was too much because then she pushed him away and now that he's kind of gone away she starts to miss him the attraction starts to creep back up on her and she reaches out she contacted me a week later i made definite plans with her and she canceled last minute because she had too much homework that night so she was doing it because she didn't value it very much and she's taking him for granted and she's just expecting him to get pushed around and be like, oh, okay. So what's interesting is he does the right thing but doesn't really understand why it works. It's confusing to him. So we'll go through that. So he says, I was sick of it and just said, well, you have to eat and I already bought stuff for dinner. So just come over with your homework. I'm not bad. I'm not mad. Let I just want to talk basically. So Notice what he says here. So she's trying to cancel the day. He's like, hey, well, you got to eat anyways. And I already bought stuff for dinner. So just come on over. He tells her what to do basically. I'll read it again what he says. He says, well, you have to eat. I already bought stuff for dinner. So just come over with your homework. I'm not mad. I just want to talk basically. So he kind of in a nice respectful way says this is my boundary. Don't cross it. Just get over here. Get, bring your cute little ass over here. I already bought food. And so, of course, because he's acting masculine, she comes over. So he says, I knew this was the wrong move. I wanted to keep anything alive, but I was over it and went on some closure. Well, you actually, without realizing it, did the right thing. You put her in her place. You set your healthy boundary and you told her to come over. Just masculinely, just, hey, come on over. He didn't say, hey, please come over. He said, come over. I already bought food. Come over. However, she agreed and acted extremely sweet and ended up staying the night and working on homework and we hung out, had fun, and had sex, and I never talked about the relationship. See how that worked? In other words, she had been taking him for granted, probably had done other things to jerk him around, and he went along with it. But at this point... He had been jerked around so much, he's like, fuck this. Just get your ass over here. And so she comes over and she's extra sweet and feminine and submissive. Why? Because he displayed masculinity and that he wasn't going to be jerked around, which is perfect. He says, she texted me the next morning and I replied and then cut the conversation short. He says, otherwise she will try and text all day if I don't do that. What the hell do I make of this and why did not accepting her canceling work? because you didn't accept it, because you're a man. And you basically communicate, hey, these are my boundaries. In a playful way, you're just like, hey, just come over, I already bought the stuff. You were masculine. And therefore, she submitted and went along with it. It's like in a subtle way, without her even realizing or thinking it, she was testing your strength to see if you were a little bitch. And you're just like, get your ass over here, I already bought the food. So you did a good job. And the fact that you didn't vomit all over her and get all emotional about her trying to jerk you around, you just put her in her place. So you need to do a little more of that. And so I would say, obviously, you need to back off and go back to the way you were several months ago as far as how much you were pursuing when she was complaining that you weren't pursuing enough. And then let her complain a few times before you start pursuing a little bit more. But like I said, it needs to be very sparringly. So. You went from not pursuing enough to pursuing too much and now the pendulum is kind of swinging back the other way for you. So you're getting there, dude, without even realizing it. So nice job.
stop beating yourself up. But again, you got to learn the fundamentals in the book. That's why reading it 10 to 15 times, you learn it backwards and forwards. You understand the philosophy. You understand the fundamentals. All these examples that are throughout the book, you remember them. If you've only been through it three times, you'll remember a few here and there. But it's just not enough to be sustainable success. you got attainable success right now. But if you want it to be sustainable, 10 to 15 times. There's no fucking shortcuts. I've done tons of emails over the years where guys don't listen to me and they get into trouble. I do lots of phone sessions with guys. They don't fucking listen to me. And they're like, yeah, I only read it once. I've been following you for seven years. I was like, I mean, you wonder why you're still having problems. So let's go through the second email. He says, what's up, Corey? Well, there's actually a ceiling fan up there if you really want to know. I was being pursued by this woman I really liked when I was going through a breakup and pretty much almost it all. When she told me to take her out, I was broke and I was hesitant to take her out. Finally, I asked her out because she wanted to see me and she stood me up. I didn't think much of it. A few days later, she texted me not to be mad at her. Well, if she stood you up and then you're like, hey, where are you? And she ignores you and then a few days later, texts you like nothing happens. I'd wait. I would match and mirror that behavior. So if she stood you up three days ago and she texts you on the third day, hey, what's going on? Don't be mad at me. Don't hate me. I'd make her wait three or four days before even responding because you're going to match and mirror the behavior back to her because this is a feral human. This is the kind of woman that blows you off, stands you up and thinks it's okay because she probably got dicked around and jerked around growing up and so that's normal behavior. And plus, if you're struggling, you're broke, you're probably feeling not, not that great about yourself, you're probably not putting out the vibe that you're a great catch anyways. And she's picking up on it and so therefore she's thinking she can jerk you around and disrespect you because that's the vibe you're giving off. That's the way you feel about yourself. So she's matching and mirroring that to you. One day she was in town. We hung out but I was sleeping on my parents' couch at the time and barely barely had any money so I couldn't set anything up for sex. Well, you got to think about the logistics of sex. You are an adult after all. Figure it out. Get a, get a part-time job. Get a little efficiency apartment. You got to figure it out. We still had a great time. Unfortunately, I drunk texted her and told her I was going to come for her one day because she is damn special to me. You never say something like that to a girl who stands you up. A girl that stands you up like that, typically if you get stood up, you won't hear from them again. But in this particular case, there was still some interest on her part. She asked me what makes her so special to her a few days later and I told her that I didn't need a reason because that would make it conditional. It, that conversation is not a helpful conversation. It's not going to make you look more attractive in her eyes. You're rewarding bad behavior in essence. So you're in essence telling her, hey, it's okay to dick me around and stand me up and I'll just put up with it. So therefore, you're inviting more of that to happen in your life. When I tried to take her out for coffee, she agreed to having breakfast and she stood me up again. Well. Got to read the book, dude. Don't be making coffee and breakfast dates with a woman you want to seduce. You're acting like a friend. You're acting like the platonic friend. I called her once and then the next day I asked if she was okay. I mean if this is somebody you know and she disappears, you're like, hey, did you get hit by a bus? Are you okay? I didn't hear from you. But somebody like this, you don't keep calling and texting especially when they ignore you because that communicates that you don't value yourself and again further reinforces and actually invites more flaky behavior. Then I didn't do anything after that. Then a few days later she texts me asking, hey Bob, how are you? What are you doing? As if nothing ever happened. I was hesitant to respond at first and I said at work, I'm good, what's up? She didn't respond. In other words, she's kind of stirring a pot, oh he's still into me. So she's looking at you as definitely a backup plan that she can dick around and jerk around and you'll just put up with it. But if you know, again, a few days later, I would have waited a few days to respond back to her. Hey, what's up? Got your message. That's all I would have said. <clears throat> then a few days later, I texted her telling her to be careful out there with this coronavirus. Again, there was no response. You don't keep texting somebody that's ignored you. So if you grew up in an environment where you're constantly getting dicked around or blown off or being disappointed, you're naturally going to want to keep reaching out because that's what you probably did with your family members growing up. 
So again, that's just that that behavior is not going to work for you. But you definitely need need to read the book, dude, because you're you're doing the opposite of what I teach, and you're going to continually get people that are going to disrespect you and jerk you around if you keep putting up with it. So let's go to the third guy's email. He says, "Hey, coach, I just want to drop you a letter and tell you how well your stuff works." Well, like I say all the time, if you think I'm full of shit, all you got to do. Read 3% Man for free at understandingrelationships.com. Apply it and you will see that it works for you. I'll try to keep it short, but I was with my ex-wife for 12 years and ended up spending over half a million dollars in all of my parents' inheritance, raising her two children from her previous marriage. That's a nice thing to do, dude. I hope her kids appreciate the fact, you know, fuck whatever happened with her, but hopefully the kids appreciate the fact that you were a good stepdad to them. Only for her to end up cheating on me and leaving me when money got tight back during the financial crisis. What a fucking piece of shit feral human she was, Jesus. How could that not leave the average guy jaded when something like that happens? Not long after that, I had rebound sex with a girl half my age, ended up getting her pregnant, and now we have a baby girl. We aren't together. She's married to someone else now, but we all get along great, so that situation ended up okay in the end. Anyway, after all that drama, I decided to swear off women, and I was perfectly content with the idea I might be alone. Well, that's why... What I teach in 3% Man is so valuable because it teaches you how to negotiate on your behalf to make sure you got good people that actually have high interest in putting a deal together, if you will. In other words, a deal for dating, a a deal for romance because this is basically what it is. It's negotiation and the other person can tell based on how well or poorly you negotiate for yourself whether or not you have something of value to offer. Again, if you love yourself and you value yourself, you're not going to put up with the feral humans. You're going to spot their flaky behavior right away and you're just going to ghost them and just always be too busy to hang out. Anyway, my passion is playing pool and I pretty much am the best pool player in the pool hall that I hang out in. I make a decent side income gambling. No woman is going to keep me from playing pool so – If I ever did hook up, she would have to be someone who could put up with me playing pool most nights and I would prefer that she liked the game herself. To be honest, that's going to be hard to find. So again, I just decided that I was okay being alone. I'm about to turn 53 and the chances of finding a woman that age who loves to shoot pool all the time is pretty slim. I talk a lot about doing things that you love and enjoy because people who like the same things tend to like each other. And it's in the process of loving and enjoying your life, doing the kind of fun things you enjoy that you'll meet other like-minded people. And look what happens next. Anyway, there's a 35-year-old gorgeous woman who plays league in my pool room every Thursday night. All the other guys are following her around like little puppy dogs, trying to impress her, flirting with her, that sort of thing because she is so hot and the age that she is, all the young guys would hit on her as well as all of the older dudes. She would flirt with me from time to time and I would flirt back but compared to everyone else in there, I probably just seem quite indifferent. Indifference makes the difference. Every guy is after her and you act like she's just another average chick. Now why would she find that attractive? Because a man who already has too much female attention in his life is not going to need any more than he already has and so therefore he's naturally going to be indifferent and therefore he's giving off the vibe of a man who is a catch. So what happens? She had been giving me signs for several weeks but like I said, I was content with being alone so I never really asked her out or tried to kiss her even though she would give me a peck on the cheek every night and eventually started giving me pecks on the lips. So she's pursuing him and he's continuing to be indifferent. Partly because he's thinking, ah, it's never going to work for me anyways. So they actually worked to his advantage, his mindset that he had. Finally, I'm thinking, okay, this girl definitely likes me. I should ask her out. So I asked her out and she said yes and that's when I found your work. Good job, dude. I was looking on YouTube for first date ideas and I ran across one of your videos. The stuff you were teaching made a lot of sense so I kept listening and I quickly realized that my indifference was what snagged her. You're a smart guy. 
I ended up having to cancel our date, which I'm sure didn't hurt at all. You, yep. Rejection breeds obsession. You were unavailable. She probably was worrying, oh, maybe he doesn't really want to see me. What's wrong with me? Why doesn't he like me? All these other guys are after me. And for the next couple of weeks, I didn't contact her first at all, and she didn't text me much either, so the anticipation was definitely building. Last Thursday night at League, we made out after I walked her to her car. I didn't text her all week, and she only texted me once, really quick. And then this Thursday night, she was waiting for me at the door when I arrived, and she was all over me all night. I tried to invite her back to my place, but she said she wasn't looking for a quick hookup, but was looking for a relationship. And that since I was the only guy in there that didn't try to play grab ass with her all the time, she wants me. Imagine that. She comes right out and tells you point blank. Everything that's in here is legit and it's how it is in the real world. As I was getting late, as it was getting late and everybody was leaving, we stopped playing pool and she sat in my lap and we made out and I talked for about an hour. Anyway, she asked me out again we set a date for the next week somewhere outside the pool hall. I didn't know about your work until after we had set the first date, but because of my previous experiences and my indifference towards women, I realized that I had been accidentally playing your playbook to a T. Good for you, dude. Now that I've got her hooked, I'll continue to follow your advice. Like I said, I was perfectly happy being alone, and that's the important thing. If you love being alone and you enjoy being alone, that's typically when a chick comes out of left field when you weren't expecting it and you meet her in the most easy and effortless way and it's just fucking magical. That's why you really have to focus on yourself and getting your own shit right. But I think that shows in your demeanor and makes you even more attractive to women. Absolutely true. And even though I'm happy being alone, I think I'm much happier with this hot woman all over me telling me she's wanting a relationship. Yeah, because you're a fucking catch, dude. You're acting like a catch and therefore you're being treated that way. And she doesn't text or call me all the time or try to stop me from doing what I enjoy, which is playing pool. So she seems pretty emotionally mature as well. Well, again, she likes pool as well. So like attracts like. People who like the same things tend to like each other. Again, this stuff works. Thanks for all you do, coach. I really appreciate it. Bob. So those are some great emails that really illustrate the right way and the wrong way to deal with this kind of behavior when you treat women properly, how well they respond and how easy they make it for you. So if you're in a similar situation and you're trying to fine tune and tweak things, but you're, maybe your emotions are getting the best of you at some times, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page of my website and book a coaching session with yours truly. And until next time, I will talk to you soon.